Welcome back to the final step of this build series. This is uh, Savage Axis XP2 chambered in 308 that we are tailoring out to fit my needs and what I want. So I'm going to be real happy with it. So far, if you recall, uh, we stripped it down. We did a whole paint job on this thing. We built a rear cheek riser. We had some custom milled knobs back here by my good friend and machinist, Mr. Saunders. Uh, we have an M Carbo Pro Trigger Kit put in there, and now we're about to put on some top hardware or some glass here. This is very exciting because then you get to see really what your rifle looks like. Let me show you what scope I chose. So first off here we're doing a Weaver one piece rail that's going right on the top of that action. We're sitting it on some Hawk rings here. Those are triple screw rings and they're even uh, two top mounts there with some Picatinny rail if you wanted to put something on top of there. For the scope, check it out, we're going with a Nikon P Tactical. Now I really like the new Nikon P Tactical line. There are some real cool uh, features there in my opinion. P, from what I understand, is just a pro staff and then Tactical, of course, is sort of a tactical version of the Pro Staff. So let's have a look here at this glass. So here we go, you open up that box and you have your glass there right away. Now I've had this out a few times already, but just take a look at this optic. Isn't that a good looking scope? So first off, all the badging is blacked out, so where the Nikon here would be normally in white or silver, it's completely blacked out so that is just a little bit of a tactical we have the P tactical badge up here these target turrets are something that I was really really wanting in a scope and I got them with this system so notice here there aren't any normal screw on caps for these turrets these are always exposed like this you have a beautiful numbering system and one thing I love is that you have these are quick adjust turrets so you can pick it up like that and reset to zero. So once you zero your rifle, there's no unscrewing a little Allen key or anything like that. You can just pick it up, dial it back to zero, and drop it, and it snaps back in place. The same thing here goes for the uh, for the windage adjustment. Quarter MOA. This is a three by nine powered scope with a 40 mil objective. So nothing outrageous there. Just a beautiful little scope to go on top of this rifle. One thing I'll mention if you are picking up this scope is that it has a very short tube here. So much so that with uh, the two piece mounts on the Savage Axis and your rings, um, it won't fit well here. So that's why I have to have a one piece mount so I can bring those scope mounts in closer together, or rings. Your one piece mount is going to look something like this. That's going to slap on top of there just like so. So we'll lay that rail on there. Now we'll just put a little tiny touch of Loctite. It's the blue 242 Loctite. I just love the look of a single piece rail like that. It looks so good. Not that it makes a whole lot of difference. It makes no difference to the function of the rifle. Again, we, we're building this rifle so it fits us well. So why have yourself struggling to get a good scope picture if you don't have to. Now after just a little bit of playing around I discovered that the scope can be way on back here to be right where I'm like 100% comfortable. I'm not, I'm not reaching forward to get the full round of my glass because you know how you look through your scope and sometimes you'll get those black edges coming in on you and you got kind of got to move your head around. Well with it way back here it's right where I want it and when I stand up and, and try to sight down the optic as well it's just perfect. I don't have to reach. I move, I had to play around here with my cheek rest a little bit and that's right, oh that's the most comfortable I've ever been on a rifle right there. So that is right where the optic is getting set right up against sort of where it opens up to the bell that furthest point ahead so take this off now and we can lock in these uh, these lower halves of my scope rings and we'll level up the rifle and then we can move ahead from there 
Okay, so we're about to put on those top mounts now, and what we need is this rifle to be level in this axis. It's not as important in this axis, front to rear, but left and right it needs to be level because the, if the rifle's level, then after we put the scope on, we can level the scope so everything is perfect, get this thing as accurate as possible. What I'm using, what I like here, is a bubble level app. And this works really well, I found, because um, because this is hyper sensitive. It gives you readings in tenths of decimals, so it is super precise. I can see now that we need to come up a little bit on the left side of the gun. So what I'll do. That's one nice thing about having an adjustable bipod here, is I can just raise up my bipod in very small increments until we get there. Notice that in the y-axis, that is this bubble here, from left to right, we are exactly zero degrees. So we are good now to get our scope in there and then level our scope in the same way. So now I've put these top mounts on just tight enough so if I give a little weight on the scope, I can still manage to turn it. Now what we're going to do is get that bubble level on top of the scope and level up that scope. So we have to turn over quite a bit. Right there is where that scope is dead level. So now what we want to do, this one has a three, so we want to just tighten evenly on each side. If you just go ahead now and crank down one side, there's a chance it could pull your scope over even just a tenth or two of a degree. there she is and I am super proud of this rifle here now. If you started out with just the basic Savage Axis like I did at the start of this video and you're happy with it, keep it like it. I'm sure you're doing just fine like it is. I just wanted to show you what was possible for a very small amount of money. Um, a, a true budget build in my opinion. I've seen some guys on their on uh, on YouTube do budget builds with the Savage Axis and they're putting seven and eight hundred dollar scopes on there so what's even the point once you get to that level is it really a budget build I guess compared to the guy that puts a three thousand dollar optic on his rifle but to us common folk that's not considered a budget build if you're slapping two and three hundred dollar too many triggers in there putting on a seven hundred dollar scope and flute in the barrel and flute in the bolt and things like that Boyd stock I mean you're, you're talking a couple grand and you could do all that but it's not needed in my opinion I am so proud of this rifle I absolutely love it the optic looks fantastic um, it feels so good to finally have a rifle that fits me effortless, effortlessly and that's the key is that when you just you just fall down on the rifle you, you are it's like sitting on the, the perfect sofa you just you fall in there and you have the perfect line of sight down your optic is beautiful so we'll get in and sight this thing out we'll zero it soon get in some target shooting soon hopefully and uh, I'll definitely bring you guys along for that as well but uh, yeah thanks for coming along the series tell me what you think is the most worthwhile investment in this project if you could only do one of the things I did where would you spend your money what would you do thanks for watching guys I really appreciate it share this video if you really liked it hit that like button Leave me a comment down below. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next one.